I'm so glad you're here. This is a week of Thanksgiving. I'm going to talk about a thankful heart that all of us need to have. A disposition of life that I believe we we're instructed to walk in. And some of us have to learn what that means. There's things I've had to learn in the area of gratitude that we sometimes take for granted. Especially when we're blessed, we take some things for granted. But we need to learn what it means to walk in a sense of gratitude and gratefulness. It's, it's, it's good. Thanksgiving around the corner for most of us and get to be with family. You know, I read the other day where it's the most stressful holiday of the year. And the reason it is is because you're, you feel required to invite family that you haven't seen all year long. <laughs> and you feel obligated to sit at the table and, and have significant conversation. And it usually ends up being very surface and it's about politics or it's one upsmanship on what I've done is better than what you've done, you know. And uh, boy, that's just the perfect storm for a problem. And before the pumpkin pie comes, everybody's upset. And uh, it, it's just an interesting time. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way, but it's a stressful time for a lot of people. And can I just say before I go any further, because we are entering into a special time of the year and the body of Christ has an opportunity to be kind and show love and consideration to all people and to so many that are going to be alone during this holiday season. If you know somebody that is, open your home. Open your home. You can put another biscuit in the oven. You can cut the turkey a little bit thinner if necessary. And, uh, but they will be grateful and oh, what it will do for your family, for them to see. In our home, my boys grew up knowing, not knowing who was gonna be at the house and when a holiday would come around, who was gonna be with us. But we have a lot of great shared memories with some special friends that we've invited in our home. So I encourage you to do that. I, I wanna take you to the scripture this morning and I wanna begin where Paul the Apostle speaks to the body of Christ in Colossae and then also you will see similar things that are mentioned a moment in the, to the church at Ephesus. It's a theme that runs through Paul's message. A man that is so grateful to God for all that God has done is very emphatic about how it needs to be one of the premier positions of the body of Christ, that we may remain grateful to God and thankful in all things and for all things, because in doing so, we are able to show a world that needs a better way, a Christ that loves them so very much. So if you will, stand with me this morning and honor the word of God. We'll look to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, verse 12, in the Living Translation. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, he must, you must clothe yourself with tender heartedness, uh, with, with tender hearted mercy rather, and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. You know, I read that in the first service and I realized there's a whole bunch of people today in three services that have never known that's in the Bible right there. <laughs> so maybe we ought to look at it one more time, huh? Make allowance for each other's faults. Please extend that courtesy and grace to me and I will to you, okay? And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, so now it's like, all that I'm saying is important, but get this, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. We are called to live in peace with one another, and to always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with a thankful heart. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And may God add his blessing to our reading of his word. You can be seated. There is a, a song that uh, I kind of grew up with and, and uh, 
As a kid in California, especially, Andre Crouch wrote this maybe in the 60s, 70s, but 70s, it was, it was well known. And I sang it like I understood it then. <laughs> I had no idea what I was talking about because in theory, it was a good song. But the older I get, the more I understand the value of this. Uh, when it says, and then this is this is strong stuff right here. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times when I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gives blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Do you believe that? I like this. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. places and I've seen a lot of faces and there have been times when I felt so all alone but in my lonely hours yes those precious lonely hours Jesus lets me know that I God for that. <laughs> Amen. That we've learned what it means that in the midst of everything, his promises are yea and amen. That he will be there with us. He will be there for us in every situation. So I've got a question to ask every one of you as we begin. Are you thankful no matter what? Are you really thankful no matter what? Through the loss maybe of a job recently, the loss of a relationship, a personal financial difficulty, that health prognosis that hangs over your head and you're wondering what the end looks like down the road or maybe a death that has occurred this last year. 
I've got a lot of folks that have already let me know. They're looking forward to the next year so we can put this one in the books and say it's behind us. But in every set of circumstances, even as they're difficult as they may be, we have the ability to be thankful because we trust God ultimately in his wisdom and his grace that everything is gonna be okay. The Apostle Paul, a man who had learned the meaning of true thanksgiving, even in the midst of great adversity, when he had been in prison, like for instance in Rome, he wrote the words that are interesting and it's much like what I said, that he wrote to the people of Colossae, when in Ephesians we hear these words, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in the evil days and don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Here we go again. He's gonna place an importance on it. Understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, there are some among us that say, Pastor, camp there for a minute and talk about don't be drunk with wine. <laughs> well, let me put it to you like this. Another way of saying it is don't run and hide from your problems. Amen. Don't look for an escape route, but run toward the barking dog knowing that God's on your side. <laughs> and stand tall in the midst of it and don't run and hide and be alone and think you can forget and it remove reality. That's what that's all about. He's saying, but the alternative to that is be filled with the Spirit. Well, I prayed to be filled with the Spirit, so I'm filled with the Spirit and that's supposed to take care of it. No, now walk in the Spirit. Now be sensitive to the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you in your thoughts and in your conversation and your action instead of running from embracing the moment knowing that he is with you. Amen. 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 We'll never get anywhere if we run from the reality. But when we embrace, oh, not the bad, but embrace the reality, we are where we are. It is what it is. And he remains faithful to who he is. Amen. He is with me in every situation. Praise God. But do this, singing praise, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's natural for us to be grateful and want to express gratitude. We have to undo that for some reason, I don't know what triggers and what takes it out of us, but little children are good examples of it. The little tyke can get a football at Christmas and he's got that football in his hand. And before you know it, he will break into song and dance about the football that I got for Christmas. And this is the best Christmas I've ever had. I, he's never had many Christmases, but this is the best in the world, the greatest gift I've ever had. It's just in us to be grateful, but somewhere along the line, we have snuffed that out or we have put it in a place of saying that that's immature activity. That's, that, that, that's not something that's gonna benefit me. And no, I'm gonna tell you gratefulness, a grateful heart will always benefit you as an individual in business, in family, in relationships, in life, that we would remain grateful. So, I want you to think about a few things. Always giving thanks for everything, no matter the circumstances, is really what Paul the Apostle is talking to us about. Amen. Thanksgiving for the Apostle Paul was not something that happened once a year, and I hope it's not just for you on a holiday that we have, but a daily reality that changed his life and made him a joyful person in every situation. Nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more than an ungrateful heart. Nothing. On the other hand, nothing will do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than a true heart of thanksgiving. Amen. I believe that. Amen. So I suggest to you that we need to give thanks 
for the material things that we have that God has blessed us with. I don't think we need to even worry about this being something we're talking about greed about here. No, because greed and gratitude don't go together. But a heart filled with gratitude toward the blessings of God, the provisions that God has given to us, helps us keep it in perspective that he has blessed us so our needs can be met so that we can be a blessing to those who need the assistance that we can offer. Amen. So I think it's important for us to say, Lord, I thank you for, I thank you for, I thank you for the fact that I have a car to drive to work. I thank you that I have a job to go to. I thank you that even though I don't like my employer, I get a check at the end of every week. Lord, help me more, be more grateful about that than the complaining I've had about the employer that I'm working for. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we can go to home, home at night and we can, we can not have to sleep out in the rain, but we've we got a, a roof over our head. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, but I, I do think it's important and maybe, maybe, maybe it's something that we've kind of lost in this world of allowing our kids to experience on their own and just kind of grow on their own. No, everything is a learned response and somebody has to teach what it is. So I applaud you as parents to stop your child in their play and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You need to say thank you. You need to say thank you. Well, but pastor, I, I don't want to make my kid do anything. This is not the message that I planned on preaching right here. <clears throat> but let's reserve some time when they're 21 years old and let's see how that works for you, okay? No, they're looking to you for instruction and help. And one of the best things you can help them with is to be grateful, grateful. Don't be so excited about opening the gift that you forget to say thank you to the people. Do you know who gave that to you? No. It was just, no, uh, well, who, the, the tag on there says somebody, you need to go tell them. Thank, well, anyway, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Expressing gratitude, no matter what the circumstances and thanking God for the blessings that he gives us. David put it this way. He said, the wealth and the honor that comes from you. He said, we give thanks and we give praise to God. But he said, we realize that everything comes from you. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14, he said, everything comes from you. If we have that attitude that everything comes from you, Lord, it does change our perspective and it changes our attitude of gratitude. Another thing that I want to suggest to you is that we give thanks for the people in our lives. Have we stopped long enough to say, thank you, Lord, for the people that you have put in my life? There are individuals who have made an impression on us that we will never, ever walk away from. And I'll just tell you something, as the older I get, the more I am aware of what impact they have made on my life. Earlier days of my life, and so focused on becoming and doing, I forget. But the older I get, the more I reflect on the fact, that's not an original idea with me, that's what I saw modeled before me. That's what I was taught by a mentor. That's what was something that was important to them and I, I liked it and I've learned that from them. If it be authors, if it be friends, if it be teachers. But I think we need to be thankful for the people in our lives. You've heard me say on occasions, and I will say it again, and when I am away from here speaking to ministers, I will usually start my conversation with them about this right, with this right here, that I believe there are four people that everybody needs in their life. I don't know originally where I got this from. I've said it enough that I can claim some of it myself, okay? But there's four people everybody needs in our lives. Everybody needs a model, a mentor, a partner, and a friend. Everybody needs a model, a mentor, a partner, and a friend. Let me just run it down real quick. Someone that you can look to who is doing it right or doing it the way you want to emulate. And you look at them as a model and you see and you study their life and, and, and you, you, you recognize what has made them the person that you honor and respect. And you want to emulate that person. You want to follow that person. Models. And if you know it or not, we all have models in our life. There are not too many original thinkers in this house, if any. But most of us have had something we have seen or heard 
that made an impression on us and it caused us to say, I want to follow in that. A model, a mentor. Mentor is somebody who's been there, done that. The guy who can tell you, watch out for that bump in the road. It's there, I promise you. And when it says on this curve, you got to slow down such and such because this business transaction will get away from you so fast you won't know what's going on, you better take heed because they've been there, they've done that, and they took that curve, that relationship too fast, and they're trying to instruct us from maybe the mistakes that they have made, but a mentor in our life. Boy, you need a mentor who is going to be truthful about not only their victories, but also their defeats. You want to hear how they struggled through something in order to get where they are. And then also a partner, a partner being someone that you can count on to know that they're going to be there regardless what the thing is. It doesn't matter if you are, are, are facing a surgery and, 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 and you, you say, who is the person I would want you to call? That's the partner. That's the person you'd want to call. That's the partner who would say, I've promised I will be there regardless the deal. And that guy's just going to show up, just going to show up. Matter of fact, Cozy and I have, have shown up on a couple occasions uninvited when it comes to surgeries of friends. And we had to travel one time to Houston to show up and be there on time for. But we wanted to be there because of the relationship that we have with this couple in our life. Are you following what I'm saying? A partner and a friend that they would say, please, and they mean it when they say, don't do this alone, but call me and let me walk this with you. Everybody needs that kind of partnership in their life. And I'm hurrying through it. The, th the fourth is a friend, a friend or friends. Can we say everybody needs friends in their life and the friends, Jesus had 12. Jesus had 12. I, I like this about what he did. He selected his friends. So don't let your friends be all the people who showed up at the party. Those are not the friends that we're talking about. Those are acquaintances and we are friendly to all people. But let those in your circle that you have selected into your circle. And then he had three out of the 12. Those he brought into a more intimate place in his life. The Mount of Transfiguration, he took them there. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see him taking those three aside from the others in his prayer. We see Jesus with Peter, James, and John on various occasions away from all of the 12 together. Then there was one. <laughs> I love this. There were 12, there were three, there was one. It's a good model for us because there was one that was a supernatural friend and he didn't have to work that friendship to find it. It was just a God thing. Have you got friends like that? It was John the beloved. It's the one who sat at the Passover meal with his head on the shoulder of Jesus and that questions were addressed to him about, is this me that he's speaking of? What is, and they knew the relationship that Jesus and John had. And on the cross, it was Jesus who turned to Mary, his mother, John standing there with him, one that was at the cross. And he said, behold, mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. There's no biological connection there. But what he was doing as the firstborn, he was giving the primary care of his mother for the rest of her life to the man he trusted. And that was John the beloved. Amen. Now that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And some of you say, well, where are you getting that kind of information? Well, we see that in the scripture, but I want to go one step further and tell you the scripture does not talk to us about John after Patmos, but we do know through historical documents that he was released from Patmos after serving a sentence or some, getting some kind of, 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 of freedom that was given to him by maybe some new judge, I don't know. But he lived out his life in Ephesus and he was the gatekeeper, you might say, to Mary. For people would make a pilgrimage to meet Mary and to, and to speak with her. And John watched out for her. Uh, oh boy, I would have. I'd have got a ticket to stand in line to talk to Mary for a while. I promise you. And don't you know, he was there to help her through that. Now, those are historical records that are kept by the church. But what a relationship. Uh, a supernatural friend. I could stop and have an altar call right here and ask the question, how many of you recognize a supernatural friendships in your life. Don't lift your hand, please. But if you, if you don't have those supernatural friends, here's what I would say. 
pray about that. Really ask the Lord about that. And say, Lord, I, you know, because we're so quick to go to the bookstores, we're so quick to line up for, uh, or, or to sign up for classes at the university and different places to, to improve on this, this, and this, and have mentors and models in our life. But we really need to pray about this supernatural friendship. God, bring someone into my life that I can be a supernatural friend to, and they can be a supernatural friend to me. I would say that I have very few, but I've got some supernatural friends in my life. I got a whole bunch of friends, but I thank God that they speak into my life. I'm thankful for my friends. That's the deal. I'm thankful. I looked at one of my dad's buddies, one of his closest buddies some time ago on one of dad's birthdays. And I told this gentleman, I said, I want to thank you for being a friend to my father the way you are. And he said, well, he's my friend too. And I said, that's what I like. I celebrate the friendship that you guys share because friendships are valuable to every one of us. Thank God for those who touch our lives. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. But give thanks for those who the Lord has given to you in relationships I promise it'll make life a lot better when we're grateful for the friends instead of wondering about what relationships we have. I'd also suggest that we need to give thanks in the midst of trials and persecutions. And really persecution, that's such a big word for the church in America. We don't get it. But there is persecution in our world. But to give thanks for the trials that we go through Thanks for the difficulties we go through and even some of the challenges to our faith that we go through, but to give thanks in all these things. You know, it was Daniel who had learned that evil men were plotting against him. And here's what he said in Daniel 6.10. He got down on his knees, it is said of him, and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. He didn't change his directive. He prayed and gave thanks to the Lord in the midst of the persecution. And we know the outcome. God delivered him from the lion's den. God set him in a place of great influence to make a tremendous difference in a nation. In 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul writes, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know what trial you may be going through, I don't know how much you might be carrying or facing right now, but I do know that God loves you and through the power of his Holy Spirit, he wants to give us the assurance that he is with us. Now, how do we activate that sense of assurance? I believe through thanksgiving, praise. It honors him and it draws us back to the reality that he is with us. He is for us and not against us. I had an experience just recently that... Uh, um, uh, I, I, I've hesitated to tell this, but I, I did in the first service and somebody came to me and said, please share that with the rest of the crowds um, with everybody else. Uh, I back in sometimes when I'm talking about the Lord spoke to me because I'm not one that 24 seven, I'm talking to God and he's talking to me maybe much more than I realize, but I'm, I'm kind of skeptical of, of the people who say, well, God told me, God told me, God told me. And, um, uh, well, that really wasn't necessary for me to say that, but that's just, <laughs> now that I think about it. But I do back into these subjects a little bit because I reverence the voice of the Holy Spirit. I, I can put it this way. I can be in a crowded room and I can hear Cozy say, Steve, and I know that voice. I don't care how crowded it is. I know that voice. And I can, I can stop and turn around and start looking for her because I know that voice. So that's, that's where I put my relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? So give me a little attitude right here. I'm walking across the parking lot to the chapel a few weeks ago. And I was pretty overwhelmed with some decisions that needed to be made. And I was really overwhelmed with about four or five things uh, that we're in that category of weight on the Lord. I can't do anything about it. I've, I've committed it to him, but now he's asked me to patiently wait upon him. And it's in that category, okay? And, and I wish I could say those waiting times are without burden. 
<laughs> but they, they get burdensome sometimes. And I'm walking across the parking lot and uh, the Holy Spirit spoke something to my heart that, that I needed it and it will forever be with me. But the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, are we okay? And the content behind that unfolded to me so quickly. And I recognized that he was really concerned that all he had asked me to do, even in waiting, was not affecting me in the wrong way. And, and he knows all things, but I didn't dismiss it. I, 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 uh, I sat down in the chapel and I said, maybe there's, some, maybe, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yes, Lord, we are okay. But there's some things I've not been attentive to because I have just been overwhelmed by. Does that make sense? See, normally it would be me. And this is the concept we have as believers sometimes. God, I need to ask you, are you okay with me? But it was overwhelming for me to have the Holy Spirit say, are we okay? Probably the undergirding thing that ministered to me most about the moment is the fact that he would let me in on something that I needed to hear, that he values the relationship that we have more than I, and I want, to, I want to raise the value of the relationship in my life to somehow get as close as I can to the value that he places on this relationship. It became crystal clear to me. He's concerned. Now, did he start answering all those things he said wait on? No. But he checked in on me. Are we okay while, we're, while you're waiting? In essence, I've asked you to do a lot by just waiting. I've asked you a lot to do such and such. Are we okay? <clears throat> so I pose the question to you in your relationship with Christ. If he were to say to you, are we okay? It's not a time for debating and throwing down my objections to things. No, it's, I'm so grateful to God for the relationship. So let's take it further. I'm grateful, Lord, that you trust me enough that though I may think it's a burden, the outcome of it is for a purpose and you trust me enough to let me walk through this with you. And it's all going to be okay. Amen. It's just all going to be okay. Yeah. Don't one of you feel sorry for Steve Dixon this morning at all. I'm covered. God's got me covered. Amen. I got a good thing going on with the Holy Spirit with the Lord. And for all of us to be grateful for the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit, I'll wrap it up with this. Are you grateful for the salvation that you have, the joy of knowing that your sins are forgiven and that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you, do you often stop and express, I am so grateful to you, Lord, that I, once a sinner, have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I have found forgiveness and mercy and I'm becoming more and more like what you desire of me because you forgave me. You cleansed me. Praise God. Do we say, Lord, I am so grateful. Grateful <laughs> to know that I'm a child of the King. What assurance. What absolute assurance I can go through life facing anything, knowing that I belong to him, he belongs to me, and the relationship is complete because I have invited him to be Lord of my life. Wow, that's major. Don't ever take it for granted. Well, I'm saved now, I can just go, no, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. But begin with, Lord, I'm so grateful for your grace and your mercy. 
Thank you for your love. Thank you for your tenderness. Thank you for all that you have done for me. All you have done for my family. Thank you, Lord, that my family knows you as Lord and Savior. I don't ever want to take it for granted. Thank you, Father, that you're working on some friends. And I know the Holy Spirit is ministering as we are praying and you are doing a work because I'm believing for the salvation of their lives and your grace. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, grateful. Now, I have to ask you the question. It's not, do you know Jesus? It is, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? I had a man tell me recently, he said, you need to understand, and he is from another world religion. He said, I am of this religion, but he said, I am a follower, you might say, of Jesus because his teachings are the greatest teachings of anyone that has ever lived. And he said, so I try to follow his teachings. And so I, I follow him. And I was able to say, you understand that, I understand that. But the difference is, is my heart has been given to him and, and uh, I, I believe that he is who he says he is, that he's the son of God. That's the thing. If you believe with your heart and you confess in prayer, you confess with your mouth, you declare, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. I give you my life. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you for dying for me. And if you believe that he did that for you, the word of God says you will be saved. So with that, would you bow your heads with me, please, everyone? And I ask you this morning to consider your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know him as Lord and Savior? If you do not, would you pray this prayer with us? Everybody pray this prayer with me. In the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you now and ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me of unrighteousness. For I do believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You died for me, you rose for me, and you hear my prayer. I ask you into my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my prayer and graciously receiving me. In Jesus' name. I think everybody ought to rejoice over that, amen? And we just celebrate the fact. Some people say it's gotta be more difficult than that. Uh-uh, we go by the Red Dixon philosophy on this. It's, it's easier to get saved than it is get a credit card at J.C. Penney's. I've heard my dad say that all my life. He said, because he's not gonna ask where you've been, what you've done, but he's gonna say, I receive you because you have asked of me. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Now, these altars, as always, at the end of our service, remain open. There's Bibles here. I've written a brochure that's in the back of them. If you'd like to take one of those, that talks about being a follower of Christ and what it means. And then we as a church, if there's anything we can do for you in your journey, we're here for you, okay? Praise God. I want you to stand with me, and here's what I want us to do this morning. And an attitude of thanksgiving, okay? One of the best ways with harmony in the body of Christ for us to align ourselves in an attitude of thanksgiving together rather than me just speaking the blessing that I normally speak over you. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to remain right there a moment and sing the doxology with me. Let's lift our voices and sing this together. Can we do it? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all.
Jesus. Amen. Amen.